the cemetery, a place most people avoid. This is my sanctuary, my happy place. <laughs> no, it's not happy place, as in, I think it's fun to traipse amongst the dead as someone of the living. I enjoy the stillness of earth, the comfort of the night, and the humbleness I feel when the dead tell their stories. They feel a heavy burden lift from their spirits when I offer to simply listen. I place my lantern on the cold ground and grab the beach towel from my backpack. I spread it out over the grass patch at my usual spot in the middle of the cemetery and sit down. As I wait, I start to see my friends that live here approach my blanket and circle around me. <laughs> Little Sally comes running up with a huge <laughs> grin, Hugo in tow. Hugo is less enthused to be dragged around by exuberant Sally, but is with her wherever she goes nonetheless. They are inseparable in death, just as they were in life. Mel! Mel! <laughs> I'm so happy to see you! I've missed you so much! She lets go of Hugo's hand and jumps into my arms, only she goes right through me and lands on her stomach <laughs> behind me. She giggles and stands up. I forgot I can't touch you. One day, I'm gonna give you the biggest hug of your life! She runs to my right, towards her father, and hugs him. <laughs> Hugo is covering his mouth as he quietly laughs at Sally's silliness. Her father is holding her and picks her up in a bear hug. She squeals in delight. Mm, but nobody can hug you like I can. He gently squeezes her, then sets her down. Good evening, Miss Melody. I turn my head to see William, a Civil War veteran, marching up to my blanket before abruptly stopping and tipping his hat towards me in greeting. I see you are in good health. Come to listen to more of our stories. He gestures to all the spirits that have now gathered around, and some that hang back. As always, William. Who else is willing and capable of sitting to listen to your stories without dread, if not I? Besides, I promised you a biography, did I not? I wink at him. He grins with pride and chuffs. <laughs> yes, I, I quite like the sound of that. Although I would prefer a more capable man to do it, it seems my options are limited. Uh, to be honest, I'm not exactly motivated to do that for you when you make such comments. Show some respect and keep it to yourself or I'll have the Reaper come force you to the Underworld. Never again will you join another battle. I stare him down as he squints his eyes at me in disbelief. You don't have the authority for that. I'll wager you don't even know the Reaper. Ah, uh, I bet I do. And they've told me you've gotten on their last nerve with your prideful and inappropriate comments. I'd only have to make a suggestion, and I bet they take you immediately. <laughs> William appears flustered, opening and closing his mouth as if he has words but can't figure out what to say. Fine. <laughs> he sits on the tombstone behind him. Ah, my dear Melody. Viviana, the only gorgeous Hispanic psychopath of our community, recently deceased. How wonderful to see you. You are truly... A breath of fresh air, especially among these idiots. As if that statement were entirely true and not rude at all. <laughs> nice to see you as well, Viviana. I hope Fernando has been treating you well in the afterlife as he did in the living realm. Well, to be quite honest, he's a big pain in my... Did I hear my name being called? Ay, Dios mío. Fernando poofs into sight beside Viviana, cutting her off. He turns and sees me as I give him a small wave. Oh, what a glorious day! Melody, my dear! It's so good to see you. It is a dark, lonely life without your beautiful face to shed light on our humble souls. I would kiss your perfectly crafted hand if I could. He gives a dramatic bow and hello. Viviana elbows him in the ribs, and Fernando acts as if she's hurt him. 
<clears throat> My darling Viv, what on earth did you do that for? What? Do you want to make out with her as well? Sleep with her? Ah, oh, you are hopeless. I hate that I'm stuck here with you. Viviana crosses her arms and looks at him as if he's the very thorn in her side that she can't get rid of. Well, my dear, you wouldn't have to be stuck with me if you hadn't murdered me. The plan was to kill you, not for me to also die. I had so many things going for me. Ah, yes, you were going places, all right. A prison cell. <laughs> I wouldn't have been caught! There were no witnesses! I made sure of it! I could have gone to art school! Why couldn't you just accepted your fate and let me have my moment? Viviana is obviously worked up. And now, here we all are, witnessing this lover's quarrel. You didn't have to push me off that cliff! You told me that you loved me, and that we were forever! It is only fitting we go together into the afterlife. I don't understand why you wanted to kill me, instead of working together to murder someone else. I would have done that for you, mi amor. It was for art! Arte! It would have been magnificent! But you ruined it. Viviana threw her hands up in exasperation and starts to walk away. You could never understand the depths of meaning it would have had. Fernando follows her a few steps. Amor, could it not be art if we died together? I think that it's beautiful. <gasps> Don't leave! Come back and kiss me! Let me caress your smooth body and hold you until all your beautiful burning rage disappears, me floor. She continues walking and flips him her middle finger. Bite me! To which he grins and audibly shivers. He turns back Ooh. to me. <laughs> Miss this cool fast melody. But this woman just knows how to light my fire. We could never be. I hope that you could forgive me. I roll my eyes and wave him off. <laughs> you never even had a chance, Fernando. Viv is one ex that I would not trifle with. His grin grows wider, and he winks. Ah, uh, well, she's only an ex for now. Viviana is my son, and I the planets. We will one day clash together in brilliance, and all the time I orbit around her will be worth it. <laughs> For now, I must do unspeakable things with her that should only be seen by the darkness. He starts trotting away toward Viviana. Ugh, that was gross, and I did not need to know! I hear him laughing as he disappears. <laughs> well, that was not child appropriate. Hooligans. <laughs> Theodora, an old woman who passed away in her sleep. She sat on the nearby bench and watched the chaos that is Viviana and Fernando. I spoke to her a few days ago, and she told me all about her life and how she was blessed to have died peacefully. Before she retired, this woman was one of the top professors at our state college. She taught humanities and volunteered at the local soup kitchen often. Theodora had seven children, four girls and three boys. And before she died several years ago, she had 15 grandchildren. They were a very close-knit family. She refuses to move on from the Earth's spirit realm because she doesn't want to miss out on her grandchildren growing up. She sits with them when they all visit her grave, even though they can't see her. She fusses over their hair, their clothes, their rebellious attitudes towards their parents. No. There is no talking Theodora into leaving this plane. Not for now, at least. Well, death isn't child-appropriate, Theodora. Yet here we are. I gestured to Sally and Hugo. Most of the other ghost children have moved on, but the others that chose to stay generally don't come out to these gatherings. At least, they still act like they have some life to them. Theodore stared at me for a moment. Death is neither right nor wrong, Melody, for anyone. 
Death is unnecessary and inevitable as is life. Innocence was robbed from those two precious souls, yet they still cling to it with all their might. Forgive me for wanting to hold that thread intact. I said nothing, knowing she's right. I glanced at Derek, Sally's father, whose head was down and eyes seemed distant as he watched Sally playing with Hugo in a game of tag near him. of their story, why they're here. Derek never wants to talk about it, and Sally doesn't remember much, just that her mom was sick. I leave them be. Derek will tell his story when he's ready. If he's ever ready. Melody! Sally began <laughs> skipping circles around my blanket, giggling. Whose story will we be listening to today? <laughs> I can hear the bounce in her voice as if she were becoming breathless in her exertion. Habits you bring over to the spirit world, I suppose. I don't know, Sal. I just listen to whomever wants- Well, I do believe it's nigh time we got on with writing my biography, Miss Melody. Or you, I should say. I suppose I'll tell my woeful tales. William stands up from the stone and places himself directly in front of me. My face gave away my feelings, as always, and Sally giggled. <laughs> Mr. Hubs, I don't think Melody wants to listen to your stories. She had her hand covering her mouth as she snickered. <laughs> A glance at Hugo told me he also found this amusing. A slight curve pulled up his mouth, but he didn't say anything. Just sat in the grass and patted the spot beside him for Sally. She happily obliged and plopped down next to him. Well, I wouldn't know why, young Sally. I happen to be a marvelous storyteller. Uh, Melody, you did say you'd write my biography. Uh, did you uh, bring a quill and parchment? William raised his brow. Um, actually, I didn't. Sorry. I don't have the time today to write the entirety of your biography. Although I'm sure your stories are absolutely engaging and not at all embellished. I propped myself on my hands. Well, I'll have you know I am utterly honest and would never exaggerate a memory. <laughs> well, by all means, William, continue. How did you die? Honorably, I'll have you know. <laughs> well, I saved a man. A very close friend of mine from being shot. His face seemed to darken a bit as he began his story. Uh, we were in friendly territory during the war. We were cleansing our faces at the lake when we heard a loud cannon fire. Hmm, where was this? Hugo, seemingly interested in his story, pipes up. William gave Hugo a half smile. Oh, here! Before any of this happened. <laughs> he answered with a wave of his hand. He meant the city, the buildings, the roads, the people. It was a spectacular view. And not nearly as many rules of townsfolk as Melody likes to tell me. Now, we gave each other the ass-kicking we deserved. Didn't bother with none of this suing or let karma get them in time nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the story, William. Sometimes he liked to rant. <clears throat> well, yeah. Well, we were at the lake when we heard a loud cannon fire. We were being attacked. And everyone grabbed their rifles and shot at the enemy. And my battle buddy had his weapon beside him, and mine was just a few meters away. We scrambled like ants to protect our camp, our land, our flag. I ran to get my pistols that I so carelessly left back at the camp. It wasn't an issue, though. I run like a stallion. <laughs> and when I got back with my pistols, I tell you what, the enemy <laughs> didn't stand a chance. I single-handedly brought down their whole front line. <laughs> well now, William Hobbs, if you're going to insist on weaving lies into your tale, I'm afraid I must insist on taking you back with me to the nether. William has a look of fear as he stares at the source of the voice behind me. I look over my shoulder, 
and find the Reaper standing casually behind me, smirking at William. William dipped his chin. It, uh, it, uh, won't happen again, Deathbringer, I swear to you. Please, let me stay here to fulfill my purpose in the war. I'd never seen William so humbled. What a drastic change of attitude. So the Reaper really does scare him, as they should. The Reaper doesn't play around with these spirits. See to it that it won't. The next time will be your last. Telling the truth is the least you can do to honor your time with the living. Uh, yes, ma'am. I, 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 I mean, sir. I mean, uh, Captain. William seemed to pale, if that was even possible, as he fumbled for the right words. The Reaper said nothing for a moment, but then... Well, do go on. Finish your story. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, of course. <clears throat> Well, I didn't actually take them all down single-handedly. When I came back with my weapon, I saw one of the enemies sneaking behind the bushes with his gun trained on my buddy. Well, I panicked and pushed him out of the way at the last second when the gunman took his shot. The last thing hurt. Hit me right in the gut. I bled out when my friend avenged me in a fit of rage. I don't remember anything after that. Just that I was dead. And nobody could see or hear or touch me. <sighs> Middle of a damn battlefield and I couldn't do nothing. <sighs> Useless. I could see the hurt in his eyes. The pain it caused him to relive his last moments. It always looked this way. The hurt. The pain. The distance as they relived their deaths. You saved a man and allowed him to live another day. There is no shame in that. You're a hero in my book, William. Now that's a story that'll catch people's attention. I gave him a wink and he grinned, back to his usual self. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, maybe I should have told you earlier. You should have already started on my book. <laughs> I could be famous by now. I shook my head at his words and watched the Reaper make their way over to Derek. He looked up at them warily, his form tensing, as if preparing for their next words. Derek Grisham, it's time to take you and the Littles back with me. I've been informed that your time here has met the limit. Please do not resist this time. I don't have the patience for fighting today. I do not want to force you. But I will, was the unspoken part of that statement. I looked at Derek and then Sally and Hugo, whose faces had fallen as they gripped each other's hands. Sally jerked on her father's hand that she was holding and looked up at him sadly. But I don't want to go, Daddy. What will happen to us? Derek gave her a loving glance before cutting his eyes to me, and then finally the Reaper. I had a feeling I was on borrowed time, and you'd be coming for us. What's going to happen? That I cannot disclose, but I will do my best to see to it that you stay with your children. All right. I suppose there's no use in fighting you, huh? No, sir. I ask that you come willingly, but I've been instructed to bring you by force if I must. Hugo looks to the Reaper with a shaky confidence. I, I don't want to leave Sally. Can I please stay with her? I love you, Hugo. We will do our best, Hugo. The Reaper is firm, but gentle in their words. As if they deal with these situations every day. Probably the case. Well, I think I'm gonna head home now. I stand up and start packing away my blanket and things. I'm not one for goodbyes, but I hope you three find happiness. William? I stand straight and turn to him. Maybe next time I'll bring my notebook and write down your story. The real one. He dipped his chin in agreement. Wait, do I have time to tell my, our story? Derek pulled Sally and Hugo to his side in a sort of protective hug as he directed the question to the Reaper. The Reaper thought on it for a moment before nodding their head. I suppose we have a few minutes for your story to be heard. They stepped back a few paces to give Derek some breathing room, and I sat on the nearby bench closest to him. I'm listening, 
Whenever you're ready. Hugo and Sally sat down at his feet, and Derek sighed, staring at the tops of their heads. As you know, Hugo isn't really my kid. He's our neighbor's boy, best friends with my Sally, and I'm so grateful for him. He smiled kindly and ruffled Hugo's hair. <laughs> Hugo smiled up at Derek in that innocent way only a child can. Sally's mother had a troubled life. I mean, I, I did too, but I never let it get the best of me. Jules was an addict. Started after Sally was born. I guess she couldn't handle the pressure of being a mom. It was hard dealing with the issues of life and then finding out you're pregnant on top of that. I understood. I was there for her. At least I, I tried to be anyway. She wasn't much for being helped. I don't know what all she did. Jules hid so much of it from me. I tried to get her to go to rehab several times, but she just wouldn't do it. Claimed she didn't have a problem and I was being dramatic. <sighs> she would take her anger out on me and I, I just dealt with it. I loved her, you know? You, you don't give up on those you love. You try to help them. So I kept trying to make her happy and trying to get her to change. If not for me, then than for Sally. She act like she's getting better sometimes and then I catch her doing drugs over and over again. Some prescriptions and some not. I tried talking to the doctor, but he would just tell me she has postpartum depression and she needs meds to feel better. She got real mad when I went behind her back like that. Mommy was sick, Mel. She always said she just didn't feel good. We needed a hug. Y yeah, darling. She, she was sick, and you give the best hugs. <laughs> Sally spontaneously wrapped herself around his leg and nuzzled it. One day, I came home from the store after work and was in the kitchen when I heard Sally crying from her room down the hall. She was only four. I stopped what I was doing and went up to check on her. She was sitting in the middle floor squeezing a stuffed dog toy and crying a little heart out. I shut the door behind me and sat with her, pulled her into my lap and held her, and I tried to calm her down. I asked her what was wrong with her. Do you know what she said to me? She said her mother got mad at that Sally wanted to watch cartoons in the living room while Jules was watching some reality TV show. His fists clenched as he remembered the moment. That's when I noticed a red hair imprint on Sally's face. I was confused at first, and then it clicked. Because how could Jules do that? I never thought she'd lay a hand on this precious girl. When I went to confront her about it, what? She had a meltdown and apologized over and over. I don't know what came over me. I lost it. I shouldn't have done that. I was angry. But I expected an argument or something. Not a teary meltdown and promises of never happening again. Never happen again, please, Derek. I love you both so much. I caved and believed her. But that night, I flushed every pill and other substance I could find while she was asleep. I hoped that it would be the end of it, but it wasn't. She always found more drugs somehow. Every day I come home, and she's high on the couch. No food was made for Sally, so I ended up cooking us all dinner. At this point, I wasn't sure what to do. She wasn't a wife to me anymore, and wasn't much of a mother. But I stuck with it because I had seen the good and hoped one day she would sober up and come back to us. A few months after the first slap incident, I noticed Jules getting more and more irritated. Overall, snappy and unstable. I brought it up and she told me I was reading too much into it. Just having trouble paying the bills with the part-time job. Now that's a whole other discussion we won't get into. We had many fights throughout our relationship, but I never imagined we'd fight over how she treated our daughter. Eventually, I noticed Sally was distant and never wanted to be touched. 
she shrunk away from me when I'd, I'd go to pick her up and play with her. Very unlike her playful nature. I should have noticed earlier. I should have been there for Sally. I should have left her mother a long time ago. He squeezed shut his eyes and clenched his teeth. After a few seconds, he released the tension and took a few deep breaths. I love you, Daddy. I love Mommy, too. He squeezed her hand. I, I know, honey. I love you, too. Her mother was beating her and, and hiding it from me. There was there were fresh bruises and some that some that looked old. She said her mother would threaten her with worse if she told anyone, especially me. What really sent me over the edge was the cigarette burns. Three of them on her stomach. I saw red. I don't believe in hitting women, but if I did, I would have broken her mother to pieces. <laughs> My baby girl. I was done. Done with jewels and her lies and not being a father my Sally needed. We fought that night and there was screaming and crying and I sent Sally to Hugo's house for the night. Thankfully, Hugo's parents always loved Sally and let her stay with them whenever she wanted. But I needed to deal with Jules, and I didn't want to see in there. No more excuses, Jules! That's a daughter! Please, just give me another chance. It won't happen again. I promise I'll get help. I left the house that night. Jules was sobbing and broken down, pleading with me. Take it anymore. up some clothes, me and Sally, and I found a hotel to stay at for the night. I let Sally stay with Hugo. I needed some time to process, clear my head, and figure out what to do and how to make sure she never, she never was with Jules again. Oh, I have a feeling I don't want to hear the rest. Poor Sally. This wonderful child who had gone through so much, yet still remains innocent and kind even in the spirit. I don't think I'd have had the strength she's shown. And Hugo, he had to silently stand by while this happened. And still, they all ended up here. <laughs> what a cruel world we live in. The next morning, I went to Mr. Wilson's house. That's Hugo's father. Pick oh. up Sally. Hey, Derek. What are you doing here? Hey, man, thanks for letting us stay tonight, Frank. I'm here to pick her up. We won't be living next door anymore. Is she ready to go? Oh, um, she's not here, Derek. What? Jules picked her up about 30 minutes ago. Oh, he told me Jules had come to get her 30 minutes ago. I panicked and ran right over to our house. 
I tried to open the door, but it was locked. I heard screaming, screaming from Jules, and crying from Sally and Hugo. And I yelled at her to open the door. And I banged and banged and banged on it. Finally, I stepped back and I kicked the door open. I guess that startled Jules and she had a gun in her hand. Where she got it, I don't know. Her eyes was wild like she hadn't slept all night and was on something. And I heard Sally call out for me crying and sniffling from the corner. Jules looked back at the kids and pulled the trigger. Time slowed to a crawl for me as I watched the bullet travel and trying desperately to move my body in time to reach Sally. But I failed. By the time I could move my legs, the bullet pierced Hugo's skull and went straight through Sally. Hugo tried to save my daughter, even though he was scared out of his mind. In a rush of adrenaline and, and rage and despair, I, I tackled Jules and I slapped the gun out of her hand and away from her. I, I couldn't think. I couldn't feel. I couldn't see anything except the woman who murdered my child. I strangled her right there on the living room floor, watching the wild look give away to a moment of lucidity, to pleading, to finally nothing. I remember I was shaking and in shock, and I looked in the corner of the room. I, I couldn't look in the corner of the room. Anguish is all consuming and overwhelming me. My eyes landed on a pistol and I, I shoved it away. My body moved on its own. It was like I watched myself walk over, grab the gun, put it to my head, and thoughtlessly pull the trigger. Then I saw my little girl and Hugo standing in the middle of the room. But their bodies were still in the corner. I'm so sorry, Derek. I couldn't think of anything else to say. He shrugged, having said his piece. We stood in silence for longer than a few seconds before the Reaper motioned for them to join. It's time. Let's go. Derek, Sally, and Hugo all followed. Bye. I'll, I'll miss you, Mel. Remember me! I teared up as I watched them leave. I thought I'd become completely desensitized to their stories and leaving. I guess not. I'll always remember you, Sal. Be a good girl. Sally gave me her biggest grin before stepping through the portal and disappearing. Everybody else was already gone, having not wanted to listen to that story after realizing what had been going on. I was all alone now. I packed my things and headed out of the cemetery. I passed by Sally's grave and noticed some lavender that I don't remember being there before. The breeze caught the fragrance and drifted it to me, and I smiled. Sally will always have a way of making me smile, even when she's truly gone. The end. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the stories told by these wonderful characters. The actors in this story are Elgin L. Train Foster as Derek Grisham, Kendall Bird as Sally Grisham, Ray O'Hare as William Hubbs, Greg Vinciguera as Hugo Wilson, Ify as Viviana Alejo, Thomas Estrada as Fernando Guerrera, Sharon Brown as Theodora Driver, Mickey Smith as Mr. Wilson, Sophia Kia as Jules Grisham, Aaron Burke as Eugene, and Samantha Filia as Melody Fowler and narrator 